that a new tape deck? Yes, that is a new tape deck. It's a very good new tape deck. Speaking of which, uh, where the f are we going? And you play tape cassettes in it. No, funnily enough, I play LP records in there. Yeah, I just fold them up in the floor, slide them right in. It's, wow. It's amazing. What will they think of next? I don't know. Perhaps some sort of sliced bread. I met Matt Bissonette when he and Steve Clark were working on a movie called uh, Looking for Leonard. They came down to Boston where Superchunk was playing a show at the Middle East, I think, and gave me a script maybe and just we talked a little bit about me doing the score for that. After that, worked on uh, Matt's movie, Who Loves the Sun? And uh, when, we were, when I was doing the score for that film, he, uh, we started talking about this movie, uh, Passenger Side, a different kind of soundtrack, which is all songs. And, you know, would I help kind of put that list of songs together, basically? And Matt had kind of started a list himself of, um, of, of music that he wanted in Passenger Side. Um, and he sent me the cut. And I watched it and kind of put together a really long list of my own and sent it back to him. And so it was just kind of this back and forth uh, conversation really about it, um, narrowing it down to what he thought worked best in the movie and what we could actually get the rights to use and that kind of thing. Some of those bands just were Canadian. A band like The Nils, you know, is a band that I loved. And I, I knew that they were Canadian, but that wasn't why I loved them, obviously. So we didn't really have to navigate anything like that because there, it was a good mix already of bands from all over. And in terms of the era of the songs in the, in the film, I mean, I feel like they're of a certain era, even though there are certainly songs in the movie that stretch the boundaries of that time period. But, but really, I think that the, the heart of it is kind of this late 80s, early 90s period in, in rock kind of punk rock and maybe some post-punk music that was really important to me growing up and I think to Matt as well. And there's more recent songs, you know, by a band like the Mountain Goats, a song that's just a few years old, but I think that they still all work together and, and have a, a unified kind of feel. The song's called Detroit Has a Skyline. I really love the Valley Girl soundtrack, and I love that movie as well. I think in terms of how the music works in the film, that's, that's a great example. A more recent film than that would be um, In the Mood for Love, which is, I believe, a Wong Kar Wai movie um, that has an amazing soundtrack of both score and also some Cuban music, which works surprisingly well with, with the film. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty great. Most recently I put on a Bad Brains record and just to kind of see what they would think about that and they loved it and they just tore up the room basically. If you don't want them to tear up the room, I think if you just put on some jazz or something like that, they maybe just tune it out and hopefully sit down and eat dinner. Our daughter is six and I've made a few different mix CDs that we listen to on the way to school of just songs that she likes. and. It's really impossible to predict how she latches on to certain things, but there's a song by uh, Brenton Wood called Oogum Boogum. She really liked that song, but for whatever reason, our, our two-year-old son, uh, when he hears that song, it soothes him in a way that nothing else will. So if, you're, if we're taking a car trip and he's screaming in the back seat and we put that song on, he will stop crying for the duration of the song. But the problem is then you have to keep starting that song over 
and over again because as soon as it's over, if you try to go into another song, even if it's another Brenton Wood song, like he's not having it. <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. If there was a plot to the new Superchunk record, I, it would be confusing. 